So today we're going to look at the Sony ZV-1 compared to the Canon M50. And you know what? Maybe I'm going to throw in the Lumix G7 just for good measure. And that's coming right up. So, you know, I've been a big proponent about the Canon M50 because I really like it. I think it's got very good autofocus with its dual pixel autofocus. But now the newcomer on the market is the Sony ZV-1. Now, I know there's a lot of people talking about the Blackmagic 12K. Woo! Or the Canon R5 or R6. But I'm talking about a camera that may be budget-minded for those of us that want to vlog. And I'll get into a vlog statement. There's a gentleman on YouTube. His name is David Harry. He has done a ton of reviews and example footages of the Sony ZV-1. And he makes one very, very valid point. That Sony has talked about the ZV-1 as a vlogging camera, except for one thing. Nowhere on the box does it say that it is a vlogging camera. So they've kind of taken advantage of the niche of vlogging. Now with the Canon, it's got the kit lens, and then it's set at 15 millimeters right now. Now the Sony, I've got the digital image stabilization completely turned off. So it's at 20, supposed to be 26. I think somebody actually did the figures on it and it's more like 27-ish or 27 and a half millimeter. And then when you use the advanced image stabilization, it crops in at 30 millimeters. So this is indoor. I just wanted to see what it looks like. They're both set on auto all the way across. They're both on standard picture profile so that we can kind of see just a little bit of a difference on how they look. Now the audio, I'm recording off my DD microphone into my Zoom H6, but this is just to give you a little rough example. If you want a studio camera and you want a camera to go out and go vlog with, could this Sony ZV-1, could this possibly be the camera for you to choose? Now, I'm going to show one thing about autofocus, and I'm going to use the Canon cap, because the Sony ZV-1 doesn't need one. Its lens is actually retractable, but we'll take the Canon, put it back down, back up, and now we'll do the same thing to the Sony. And back down back up and back down now to be fair product showcase is not on the Sony ZV-1 I have got that turned off right now now the product showcase feature in the ZV-1 for those of us that are either doing reviews or you're a talking head or you're even doing a live stream and you want to be able to show a product and have it zoom in super fast that product showcase feature is very very nice now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go outside, we're gonna take all three cameras, and I say all three because I'm gonna throw the Sony ZV-1 against the Canon M50 against the Lumix G7. Now in the G7's defense, we all know Panasonic autofocus is rough. It's very, very rough. And when you think about the G7 especially, it, it, I, I like the G7, I really do. I think it's got great image quality that comes out of that camera, even with the kit lens, but you gotta manually focus. But enough of that. By the way, I shot a scene earlier trying to do all three of these. I don't know what happened to my Lumix G7 because for some reason, the image turned out completely blue. I'll just throw that up right now so you can see I don't know what happened and I was searching through the menu just to see is there something that changed in the menu system or what I don't know so I had to actually go back and reset it to factory specs and then do all my tweaking again and then it seemed to be fine but I'm going to take it outside we're going to see how the color looks between all three cameras autofocus knowing for the fact that the G7 does not have very good autofocus but just autofocus out of focus, uh, the blurred background, how it focuses on your face, how much of that nice Tony, and I say Tony because of camera conspiracies, but how, how much of a blurred background that you actually get with all three of these cameras, and uh, I'll report back and tell you my final thoughts on it. Okay, so I'm out here with the Sony ZV-1, the Lumix G7, and also the Canon M50. I got them set up on a 
kind of a janky little uh, contraption right now, but it seems to be holding all three of them very well. I want to see focal length. Now, right now the Canon is at 15 millimeters. The Lumix G7 is at 14 millimeters on its kit lens. And we're at 24 millimeters on the ZV-1 just to see field of view. Now the electronic image stabilization is on on the ZV-1 and it's set to standard. Let's see how it does with auto exposure. Which one exposes quicker than the other? Man, if you think that holding one camera is heavy, holding three of them is definitely heavy. And then we'll look at some image quality. Now, keeping in mind that the Lumix G7, bless its heart, I mean, I like that camera a lot, but its autofocus likes to play hide and seek. It likes to just kind of jump around, so it's definitely a manual focus camera. So now that I've done this test, hand holding all three of these cameras, I'm going to stick it in the computer, see how the image quality looked out of all three of these, and you can tell me in the comment section below which one you thought did better for image quality, autofocus, which we know the Lumix is rough on, and how it auto exposes. So let's check that out now. Now there's one thing I noticed with the Lumix G7, and right now I've got it set to manual focus, is when I was doing the test earlier outside, you could tell that when it's in focus, the background has such a nice blur to it. I mean, a surprising blur where I was like, you know, I need to go outside and just go ahead and show this one more time considering that the kit lens its f-stop is a 3.5 so the aperture doesn't go like wide open on this thing it's kind of a you know an average aperture it's not like the 1.8 that's on the sony but i was just surprised at look at that background it is just nice and blurry back there so it's just something i wanted to kind of add and then I'll show the Sony ZV-1 with its uh, little defocusing feature so that you can blur out the background. Okay, so back to the Sony ZV-1. And I'm going to show you what the defocusing does for the background. Here's a good shot. Hit that little button. And now the background is completely defocused per that little defocus feature. So just to give you a little rough idea, I keep looking at the screen because I want to see exactly how blurry am I getting the background. I had too much coffee, my hand shaking. But if you like blurry background, that little defocus feature is pretty nice. And when you turn it off, now everything is clear and we'll turn it back on again and get it all nice and blurry. So I just wanted to kind of add that because it was kind of surprising for me with the Lumix G7 exactly how much of that blurry background you could still get going in manual. Or if you luck out and the autofocus actually nails focus, it looks really, really nice. So what do you think about the video? What do you think about the Sony ZV-1 compared to the Canon M50 and the Lumix G7? Now I will tell you that there was a couple of things that was very surprising to me. I like the color profile. I will say the standard color profile coming out of the Sony ZV-1 is very nice. Now, is this a comprehensive review? No, because I'm still playing with this camera. I've had it for about three weeks. I'm going to give it about another week of doing some low light tests with it. Some log profiles with it in color grading just to see how it does, even though it is only 8-bit. But... One thing that kind of stood out to me. When I was walking around with the Lumix G7 
it really surprised me that when the Lumix nails focus, you get a very nice blurry background. And yes, the color profile is a little bit flatter on the Lumix, but then again, you can color grade that and fix that in post, no problem. And that's why I went back out because when I was looking at it in the computer, I was like, wow, this actually turned out really, really nice. I want to go back and redo it and shoot it in manual focus just to show how nice the blurry background can be. And is that something that the Sony ZV-1 can copy very easily with that defocus button? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as you saw for yourself, that defocus button works so well. I mean, it really does isolate you so the focus is directly on you, blurs out the background beautifully. Uh, you know, there's a couple of little things about the Sony ZV-1 that do irritate me just a little bit. One of them is the fact that it has a touch screen that is totally useless. It's only good for one thing. That's to touch the focus. You can touch anywhere else on the screen and it won't do anything. So, you know, maybe Sony, if you're listening, that's something that you can address in a future firmware so that people can navigate with that touch screen. Cause I mean, you know, you finally have got a touch screen or you finally have a screen that flips out. So it's not up above, it's not flipping out from the bottom. It actually articulates out the side and it's a touch screen. Gosh, let us use the touch screen. Let us touch it and manipulate it. Another thing that really surprised me when I was looking back at the footage at all three of them side by side, yes, the Lumex G7, it's not very good in stability at all, but the Canon M50 looked really, really nice with its stabilization. Now, considering the Sony ZV-1, it was just on standard, but the M50 looked really, really good. There was some nice stable footage out of that. So anyway, this is just kind of to show you is the ZV-1 by Sony, is it something that you should consider purchasing? Considering that it is a, I mean, $798, $799, sometimes a $748, but basically almost an $800 camera versus a $500 Canon M50, or you can even get the Lumix G7 now for in the 480s, 470s. Is this camera really worth it? So I'll be doing some more video testing. Tell me in the comment section below, what do you think about the Sony ZV-1? And until the next video, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Quick little sip of coffee. Super human.